In 1950, American geophysicist Lloyd Berkner had a brilliant idea, a bold new initiative that would bring together scientists from around the world. Using new technologies like rockets, satellites, and radar systems, they would study the Earth in ways previously unimaginable. You've probably heard of the Reputation Era, the Gap Year, Brat Summer, No Shave November, Spring Break, Throwback Thursday. Well, let me introduce you to the International Geophysical Year. It was a year of saying yes to geophysical exploration. Hi, I'm Sarah Smay, and this is Space for Humans. In 1950, the world was in the grip of the Cold War, when international relations were decidedly not chill. But members of the scientific community saw Berkner's idea as an opportunity to rise above political tensions and unite researchers from both the Western and Eastern blocs. The ICSU, an independent scientific organization, took up the challenge and formally established the International Geophysical Year, or IGY, in 1952. They set a specific time period for the project, July 1957 to December of 1958. Okay, that's a little more than a year, but even scientists know the power of branding. This time was chosen because it included what's called a solar maximum, a period of increased solar activity that would offer unique opportunities to study the Earth's atmosphere and magnetic fields. The IGY set out with ambitious goals, covering a broad range of geophysical phenomena. Scientists focus on everything from meteorology, oceanography, glaciology, to seismology, solar radiation, and the cosmic rays. Their goal was to understand how the Earth functions as an integrated system, with particular attention on phenomena like auroras, magnetic storms, and the Earth's ionosphere. That's a layer of the atmosphere critical for radio communication. But the IGY also had another focus that would have far-reaching consequences. Space, including for this YouTube channel. One of the IGY's key objectives was to launch the world's first artificial satellites so that scientists could study the Earth from space. Since this was during the Cold War, after all, both the United States and the Soviet Union immediately committed to constructing and launching one of these newfangled artificial satellites as part of the initiative. Nobody wanted to get left behind. And on October 4th, 1957, in the early months of the IGY, the Soviet Union succeeded. Sputnik, the first man-made satellite, orbited the Earth and transmitted a radio signal that could be detected by scientists across the globe. The successful launch of Sputnik marked the beginning of the space race. That's the part of the story we hear a lot. But the other part of the story is that Sputnik transformed humanity's understanding of space. It wasn't just a triumph for the Soviets. It was a triumph for scientists around the world. The United States launched their first artificial satellite, Explorer 1, three months later. Interestingly, Explorer 1 would make the groundbreaking discovery of the Van Allen radiation belts, zones of charged particles trapped by Earth's magnetic field. Both of these satellite launches were direct products of the IGY's collaborative scientific spirit, pushing forward space exploration and technology development at a time when the world was just beginning to imagine the possibilities of space travel. While space was the most visible result of the IGY, the initiative also made significant advances in understanding the Earth itself. Another of its key achievements was to jumpstart research in Antarctica, which at that time was a largely unexplored continent. The IGY prompted several nations, including the United States, the Soviet Union, United Kingdom, and others, to establish research stations across Antarctica. The scientific efforts during that year also laid the foundation for the Antarctic Treaty of 1961, which established Antarctica as a zone dedicated to peaceful scientific research and banned military activity. Sound familiar? That's the same model that the Outer Space Treaty of 1967 was based on, preserving space as a place of peace and discovery. The IGY also led to critical discoveries in Earth science, oceanography, meteorology, and seismology. It verified the theory of plate tectonics. It provided some of the earliest comprehensive studies of global ocean currents, climate patterns, and the Earth's seismic activity, including the tracking of earthquakes and the study of the Earth's core and mantle. 
But a large part of the success of the IGY was not scientific. What made the IGY unique was its emphasis on international cooperation. At the height of the Cold War, when tensions between the United States and Soviet Union were running high, the IGY brought together scientists from more than 60 countries to share data and collaborate on research. The event fostered a spirit of openness, with the countries agreeing to share their scientific findings, regardless of political alliances. They said, forget geopolitics, we're in our geophysical era. This set a powerful precedent for future global scientific efforts, proving that cooperation in science could transcend political boundaries. The International Geophysical Year may not be widely remembered today, but its legacy is all around us. The IGY marked the beginning of the space age, launching the world's first satellites and setting the stage for the exploration of space. It also contributed significantly to our understanding of Earth's geophysical processes and established a framework for international scientific collaboration that continues to this day. The IGY's emphasis on open data sharing and peaceful research cooperation helped shape later global efforts such as the International Space Station and ongoing climate research collaborations. It showed that science could be a force for unity, even in a divided world. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more Space for Humans.